Okay. Cool. So Rita, can you, uh, are you just listening or are you able to talk? What's going on? I think she just has audio on so she can just hear us. She said she was going to be dog walking, so she might like be able to find spots where she can join, but that's all good. So let me load the live stream started, by the way. Um, so these live streams, two things happen. Um, we're like right now we're talk or I'm talking, but nobody's watching yet because it just started. But at the same time, we're also making a video that people will watch in the future. Um, Rita says her audio isn't working. You can't hear us or we can't hear you. We cannot hear you. Okay, let me find, I have to go to my live stream and, oh man, <laughs> I saw this video, Lucas. Uh, it was about, here actually, I'll link it to you, one second. Um, Chrome. I saw this video about this, this like old white dude talking to people about living in Latin America. And he was like, mm -hmm. he was like trying not to show his ignorant racism while also showing his ignorant racism. It was kind of, it that's was how, kind that's of how that works. America. But this video has like, yeah, 404,000 views. It's ridiculous. What was, what was he talking about? The title of the video is Moving to Latin America, a Gringo Warning. And it definitely was not the same as my... Okay, so I agree with him in a, in a, in a few ways. Like, basically what he was saying is you shouldn't just... If you're retiring in Latin America, you shouldn't, you shouldn't just buy property. You should go and live there for a year and rent and see what it's like. And then you can buy property if after living there for a year, you like that. I completely agree with that. That part makes a lot of sense. But then in the rest of his video, he was talking about how, okay, but don't, don't be an idiot. Like you realize you're a gringo. You will never fit in. You will never have friends. They will always try and use you. And I was just like, Damn, dude, He's your world weird is fucked. Yeah, yeah <laughs> definitely. Yeah. <laughs> but also, he was like, he he literally said, "Oh, okay, yeah." He was talking about the Spanish language barrier, right? And then mm -hmm. he goes like, "Look, you will never be fluent enough to make friends in Spanish. That's never going to happen. I've lived here for seven years, and I still can't do that." And it was just like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" Like, obviously, that you can just the. <laughs> yeah like obviously you can learn a language well enough to make friends like that's absolutely possible for anybody you know so it was weird yeah, because course. some of you his don't points even need to speak sense, any but... of the same language to be friends with somebody yeah yeah exactly we've had that experience we've made friends with yeah the language it's, bu barrier. it's bizarre and confusing but it's fun <laughs> what's up bray Bray joined, but there's no video. Usually he joins and then it like turns into video and he can hear after like a minute or two. Gotcha. Yeah, you got rid of oh. your uh, fake background. Yeah, it makes it makes me fade away sometimes. Yeah. Hey, we can Hello, hear you now. Can Rita. anybody hear me? Yeah. Oh yay! Yay! Oh, what's up, Rita? Yeah. Oh, no! <laughs> All I had to do was uh, just restart my phone, just like reboot it. Nice, awesome. Yeah. So now, now we're just waiting to hear from Bray, because he joined. Oh, okay. Maybe he's having problems too. <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, can I? Since we're waiting for Bray, can I quickly say something? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> because I'm actually gonna have to get off the call at about in a, you know, like at the 45 minute mark okay um i just want to share that i i got through the week without drinking alcohol you did it <laughs> this is like an aa meeting nice. I'm alcohol, so was... <laughs> but anyway i just wanted to share that because that was something you know i committed to last week that was your win yeah. so what, what was that what was that like 
<laughs> oh, it's not that bad. It's not like I got the shakes or anything. I just, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's fine. I, um, it just, yeah, you know, I just had like a couple of moments where I was like, oh, that would be real nice. <laughs> but I didn't, you know. So, it's all good. I'm going to keep keep doing it. And, oh, and I even went to a bar. And I, I met my roommates over there. And I just... The lady made me, the bartender lady made me some fruit juice, and it was fine. <laughs> I had to have something, of course, you know, but yeah, it was great. Yeah. It's no problem. No problem. I'm, I went long periods of my life without drinking. I used to be a, uh, don't laugh. Well, I, I shouldn't say that. That's not nice. Um, I used to be like a, a devout Christian. Let's just put it that way. And, and the people I hung out with didn't drink, so I didn't drink for like, so that was like, you know, eight years, and then I did a couple other things where people just didn't drink, and they were kind of against it, so I didn't drink, you know, so it's yeah. not like, you know, it's a, you know, it's fun, I feel funny talking about it, but I'm sure other people, uh, I think other people can relate, I don't think it's, yeah, I think most, most people, alcohol problems are really common, it's like one of the most common problems everywhere in the world, yeah, Nobody, I shouldn't say nobody, but a lot, a lot of people don't like to talk about it because you don't want the stigma attached to you. Like, oh, I, she, I hear she drinks a lot. You know, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be that person, but okay. So no, you got to be anyway, right. Yeah, you got to. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be. Right? You got to be honest. You know. Yeah. Hey, hey, Philly, how's it going? Oh, hey. Uh, can you guys uh, hear and see me? Yeah, yeah. It looks like you're in the city somewhere at night. You're in a different time zone. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in uh I'm at this place in uh in Rome. Oh, Sorry, you're literally in Rome. I thought you were saying the phrase I'm in Rome, which sometimes people say to mean like busy or something. Oh, is, is that a phrase? <laughs> yeah, isn't that a no, thing? No, no. When in Rome no, do us the Rome. Okay, no, I'm thinking of a different <laughs> phrase. That's a yeah, social well, thing. Think... That second one you said is a phrase. Yeah, when in yeah. Rome do as what does that mean? When in Rome do as the Romans do? Uh, I think it's Blend just into wherever you an, are. an excuse to do whatever you want. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Basically. As as with all phrases, there's situations where they're relevant and useful to justify our actions. <laughs> well, and then it sometimes it's you know like I think I take it as to be relatable and to be you know to, to fit in, but to be don't be like. Because it's from the Bible, and it's like, you know, Paul the Apostle was trying to preach to people, and he, you know, he just felt like he had to blend in so that he could be relatable to them. I didn't realize it was a Bible quote. Yep. Well, not the exact phrase, but yeah, the, the idea behind it. Yeah. Sorry, guys. So, so if you guys have no, you might notice that both Lucas and I have the same background audio because we we are in the same house, by the way. For you guys who don't know Lucas, Lucas is one of my close like in real life friends, and he's he's living in Nicaragua while he's studying online. So Ray, at some point, he's joined, so I think he can hear us, but we can't see him, and he's not saying anything. But at some point. He's going to join, and, oh uh, yeah, so he can hear us, he can hear us, but he's having, he's having trouble. So Rita, or uh, Gray, Rita was just, she just restarted her phone, and then her troubles disappeared. Hey guys, uh, I'm going to check back in with you in like uh, 20 minutes. I'm going to take the, uh, the subway here somewhere, okay. uh, so I can uh, find a place to sit down. Cool, so yeah, we'll, we'll probably have everything bit. situated by then. Okay, cool. See you guys later. Ciao. All right, I still haven't pulled up the comments. I got distracted by talking about that gringo video. Now I want to now now I want to make a video called How to Not Be an Ignorant Gringo. Yeah, there's eight people watching. What's step one? What's step one? Uh, yeah. I don't know actually. I haven't determined the steps. Because the main the main thing that the difference between like a, a gringo and an ignorant gringo is I guess usually it's the interest in culture like the people in general in Latin America are going to be quite friendly towards tourists but they're 
there is going to be a vibe against them because there are a lot of tourists who don't give a single fuck about the country they don't try and learn the language at all they scoff at learning the language and all that they care about is like drinking and partying and they don't actually want to get to know any locals and they don't have any interest in talking to locals that experience like that's something that a lot of locals experience at some point when they're interacting with foreigners so it's like the main thing is when a local thinks that you have zero interest in their culture that's when you're going to come off as the most ignorant because you're like literally visiting their culture so yeah if they feel like you don't have any interest in the way that they are and the way that they live then yeah that 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 that's not good and that that's the main reason you would be perceived as like ignorant um to, to be fair we uh vibe. go ahead no i'm done what did you say uh, to be fair to be fair we experience that in california with people that aren't interested in in the culture here and you know stay in their own communities and don't learn the language at you know what I mean? So to be fair, it definitely can come from any angle, you know, yeah, not just everywhere. gringos. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. So in this case, I was talking about a specific video that I watched last yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've been doing research about like retiring and retirees and trying to understand um, kind of that the headspace of people in that demographic better, because obviously it's not, right. it's not like the same as my headspace or the people I know. Um, and that that was quite interesting um that individual in particular it was crazy he, his youtube channel has like seven thousand subscribers and he has a video with half a million views like geez that's insane that's that's like that's a couple hundred dollars a month in ad revenue literally just uh, well, <laughs> just from so that video so the lesson is being a racist pays? <laughs> well, no, he's not. Okay. I, I, I don't want to say he's like a bad racist because you could definitely tell that he was making the video out of a place of care because basically what he did is he purchased property before visiting a place and then got in over his head and he wanted to make sure that other people wouldn't be in the same scenario and that's why he made the video. Um, but he does also expose personality traits that show why he was in, you know, in that situation in the first place, you know, like, like he was basically saying, like, it's impossible to learn Spanish and it's impossible to make friends. It was just like, oh, wow. e. yeah, he, he said the sentence, I've lived here for seven years and I still can't have an emotional conversation and have like a meaningful connection with somebody in Spanish. You're never gonna be able to do that. It's never gonna happen. I was just like, wow. what? <laughs> wow. I just got to say the opposite of this, dude. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, and, and you know what? A certain part of his audience, that that is important for them to know that because there are tons of people that, I lived in Germany, I was in the military, and I always went off post and, and mingle with Germans and, and you know, dr drank in the culture and so forth. And, uh, yeah. but there were other people who just stayed in the barracks, never left the, the army post. It's so pretty common. certain people, yeah. So certain people, that was good advice for them <laughs> because they're, they shouldn't go if they're going to be, if they're not going to learn the language and try to make connections, you know? because they're going to be really lonely yeah and, and that's something i i have to try and remember with a grain of salt because from my perspective like i don't focus on studying spanish like uh, right and for now my spanish is good enough that my nika friends don't really express irritation to me but in the beginning that was definitely a thing like they didn't like that i wasn't actively trying to study but meanwhile like i'm eating the food i'm living here i'm going out by myself i'm buying things i'm like interacting with people outside you know i'm doing something on a regular basis that exposes me to spanish culture and i for i have to kind of understand that it's different being a young person and living in the capital 
versus like retiring and living out in the countryside and never seeing anybody. These are very different experiences and you're definitely gonna learn Spanish way faster if you're living in like a populated area and you're actually interacting with people versus if you're like trying to live out in a remote location and have absolute minimal interaction with people. Because that is how a lot of people, that's what a lot of people want. They just want to be left alone and they don't want anybody to talk to them and they don't want any of that, which is sad. Like I understand it because a lot of people suck, but at the same time, like you're not going to develop as fast. And if you don't get into some form of community, even if it's a community of other expats and retired people, then you're, you're going to be sad. Um, even though everything's really cheap, you know, we're humans, we have to, we have to be around people who relate to us. So that's kind of one thing I'm trying to figure out is how do I, how do I keep that in mind? Like, how do I better understand the differences between who I am and my mentality and my perspective and the perspectives of people who are seriously interested in retirement, but don't have enough money to traditionally retire? Like, I, I really need to understand that angle more. I need to understand like what, the concerns are what the fears are where these people congregate where they communicate um and i think facebook is probably the best solution for that because it's the most like widely adopted and it's not like facebook isn't like new and young anymore like a lot of people have facebook um so probably something to do with facebook ads um i haven't i haven't figured out exactly yet though Bray is going to join pretty soon. Uh, he said to give him a couple minutes. Hello, MFIX Frexes and Johnny. What's up, guys? I recognize Johnny. Step one, breathe. <laughs> that's funny. So that's referencing how to how to be an ignorant or wait, what is an ignorant gringo? How to not be an ignorant gringo? Oh yay! Hey, Bray. I heard something. There we go. You hear me? Yeah, I heard your voice. Nice. All right. There we go, man. Yeah, yeah I tried to join with my uh, computer this time and just not working out. It's all good. It's tricky. Okay. So how's your week been, Bray? Been great, man. Been great. Um, Want to talk about the goal real quick? How to go? Your goal was to do a hundred dollars five days, or four days. I four days. Was... Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So I got uh three days out of the five, which is good. That's really good. It's good. It's that's good. That's good life in Nicaragua, money. Yeah. <laughs> right. 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 I just gotta make sure. Gotta you know keep the losses small. Uh, the losses weren't too big. It didn't overpower the wins, so. But they definitely need to be smaller. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Like you got to, you know, minimize your losses because. Essentially, you want to be able to, you know, lose out on two trades, and have one good trade, and bring still you back be profitable. profitable. Yeah, exactly right. So you got the odds in your favor. Yeah, that makes sense. So how, how do you tell the difference between situations where you might, like how, how, how would you go about doing that? Minimizing your, because obviously so you wouldn't you want a loss to ever occur, but it does occur. And I'd imagine there's things that you can do so that when you do lose, you don't lo lose so much that it makes all of your trades profit you know net negative right exactly exactly right and as soon as you get into a trade the first thing you do is set a stop loss set a price that you are willing to take if it gets down to that point that you get out of the trade okay so it's essentially you're setting at a uh, percentage point so you set your stop loss at like four percent and you set your target profit at to eight to ten percent Okay, so let's it's say game. let's say I buy something for ten dollars. I would then set two sell points, where if it loses a certain value, it gets sold so that it doesn't lose even more value. 
and if it gains a certain amount of value it gets sold so the first Correct. one you said is a stop loss a stop loss it's your point uh it's a price point that you're looking at if the price of the stock gets to that point you're out of the trade okay stop loss and then the you're no long profitable version of that is called do you know the the target profit price target profit price okay yep. cool. Oh, on most I... platforms there's something called a limit sell that kind of works the same too i think a limit sell. well you use the you use the limit sell to execute your order gotcha yep i gotta i don't know what's and, a limit and sell? you just you just <laughs> okay so a limit sell so there's there's like essentially two type of orders you can put into the market to sell your the stocks you bought you could do a market order or send your order out at the exact price that the stock is currently trading at. Okay. Or you could do a limit sell, like he was talking about, where you sell at a specific price that you want to sell at. Oh, okay. So a is limit there ever sell... an advantage to doing a market sell? Oh, what you say? Uh, do you ever use market sells instead of limit sells? Yeah, I always use market because. Okay the stocks I'm trading, their prices move faster and you might not get filled trying to do limits. Gotcha. So you just do market and then if it goes down a little bit, who cares? Yeah. Yeah. One is, it's usually just one cool. or two cents. Wait, so okay. Look, I'm still trying to understand this properly. A limit sell is when a limit sell triggers at a price. So, so you have a, a stock of Disney and you're selling it at 145. When the price is at 145, it'll sell. But if it dips below, it won't sell. Whereas a market sell will keep selling even after it goes down. As long as it well, hit 145 at some point. Yeah. The market sell just sends your order out immediately. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. There's a lot of concepts to understand here. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah. We're going to make a keyword list. One second. There we go. So, so great. So Brady, what's up, Rita? Hey, Brady. Yay! So I wanted to ask you: Do you can you pretty much set this uh, in the morning or, so, or before you start work, and then it just kind of plays out, or do you have to fix it a little bit? No, you you could you have to watch it. You can do what is called swing trading, where you're buying a stock and you're holding it for a couple of days, and then you know that frees up your time a lot. I'm ready to quit eBay and start doing this. Let's do it. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> it sounds interesting. It sounds, but this. Oh, I know. I know. Yeah. Oh, did you lose a lot of money before you made? Did you lose money before you made money? I mean, did, did yes. you? Yes. Yep. Was yep. it painful? Was it painful? Yeah, it's painful. You know, I'm still, I'm still not all the way profitable yet. I still got to grow my account, so I'm still, I, you know, mm -hmm. I'm still not at the point where I want to be at. Okay. Good for you for uh, going, doing it. It's, it's, yeah, it's awesome. It's risky, but uh, life's risky. Life's risky. <laughs> right, exactly. It's real, it's if not, you don't do anything, that's really bad. That's the and biggest you know, risk you, you can take. About it. And you got to think about it. You know, a lot of people who do, you know, big stuff, at first they thought it was risky until they get into the act of doing it, and it's not risky at all. Yep, and then everybody's like, you're lucky. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It got from exactly. you were doing you were risky, and now you're lucky. <laughs> exactly right, Rita. So, uh, I'm trying to make sure uh, I'm making a list of like keywords. Um, whenever I start learning about something new, I essentially like start by learning the language, right? Like if you start studying drop shipping, you have to learn what drop shipping means, what arbitrage means, what a source is, what a supplier is, what cash back is, what gift cards are. And it's not the actual definition of all these words, it's the definition relevant to the context, right? So in this case, um, the okay, the, the the concept earlier you talk about was a stop loss. Is that right? Yes. Stop loss. So there's stop there's loss. Stop. There's the opposite of that, which is prof. What was that again? It's called uh, your profit target point. Profit target point. Okay. Target 
point. So we have stop loss, profit target point, limit sells, swing trading. These are all the terms that I've heard that like I have to make sure that I understand. Uh, and and uh, in market order. Loss. Market order. Okay. So so Bray, you you're normally a day trader, right? You uh you try and get rid of everything in the same day. Yes, correct. Okay. Yep. Uh, do do fees add up, or are you on like a, a feeless platform? Yeah, I'm feeless platform right now. I execute my trades with Robinhood, and then okay. I look at the charts where I'm looking at the price and stuff on TD Ameritrade, which uh, gotcha. Jack is okay. going to try to open up today. Yeah, I have a minor. So are obstacle. the the charts are. The charts on TD Ameritrade, those are, are more Advanced. in depth. Okay, I then think, the things yeah. in uh, like Yahoo or Google Finance. Yes, correct. Yep, way okay. more advanced. Yep. Gotcha. And uh, Charles Schwab is also a very good platform to use. It's just as good, and it's zero commission free on that one too. Gotcha. So one one thing. Yeah. I Go on, Rita. Oh, in response to Robinhood, they had to start doing everything for free as far as the trading because Robinhood, you know, kind of changed the whole industry. Correct. Yep. Yep. So now everybody's going to have free trading. That's really going to open it up for kind of more common people, you know, because most people, you know, most common people can't afford to, you know, all those fees that they were charging. So it's pretty cool. And the account limits are a big deal, too. Oh, yeah. So are there account limits? I don't even know. Nope, nope. there's no, no more account limits. Hood. You can put in 10 cents if you want. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. So it, it's wide open. <laughs> there's one, one other thing that I think uh, we need to talk about. So the word day trader was just used. This is a kind <laughs> of style of purchasing and selling stock, right? Correct. But not all people who purchase and sell stock are day traders. So what Correct. is a day trader? And how can we make this clear for anybody listening? And I think it'll also be relevant to talk about, um, you mentioned that there's a certain hour, a certain time where the market opens, and then also a certain time where it closes. So the let, let's cover these so we can understand that. All right. All right, so on the Eastern time, the stock market opens up at 9.30 a.m. So, you know, essentially if you're on the uh, Western side on the California time zone, it opens at 6.30 a.m. That's where I'm at. Yeah, so for you, you have to get up and do this stuff earlier than when it actually opens. Correct, correct. Gotcha. But essentially, once I get it down packed, that means I have more free time throughout my day yeah yeah and so tell us more about like what does your process look like what time do you start how long do you take just give a sample okay. of like okay this is a day in your work what kind of stuff are you doing you mentioned the two apps that you're using we've covered a lot of these concepts um so i'm trying to really like map this out and make sure that before we like make an account <laughs> Um, that at least That's anybody a, listening to this is educated enough about trading to understand kind of the lingo and then they can get involved in it, right? Correct, correct. Okay. So, yeah, well, what I pretty much do, I'm, I'm lucky, you know, I get a, uh, I uh, join a uh, membership where I get a watch list. You probably want to watch, you know, write that down, the watch list. Okay. <clears throat> And the watch list is essentially you doing like a pre-workout. So you're you're looking for the stocks that are going to have the most volume for the day. Okay. And volume is the amount of people buying and selling shares. Okay. So... I get my watch list. It comes around like six o'clock in the morning and it gives me about three to five stocks that I can look at. And so this is something that you've subscribed to, you pay for 
And so someone else has some kind of information that allows them to more easily see what stocks are they expect to have more value or correct correct okay. they, they expect the stocks to move can i ask can i ask where where you decided to subscribe to because i've seen like tons and tons of watch lists and i've always been like well i don't know there's so many how do i know who's legit <laughs> yeah it's, it's very hard um mine is uh i i got lucky uh he had just started out it was about like a year and a half ago and uh i was in another stock group on facebook it was, it was, it was a free group and somebody had posted his results into our group. And I was like, wow, you know, those are really good. Who is this guy? And then I got into his Facebook group. And you, the real, you know, you just have to, it's kind of like you just have to, and it's just like business, you know, you, you're gonna find a good virtual assistant, you're gonna find bad virtual assistant, you're gonna find a good mentor, you're gonna find bad mentors. You just gotta keep trying here or there. Cause I, I went through, you know, like three or four online courses, you know, I, I purchased, couple on Udemy I did a couple on YouTube so you know you just got to keep going to find someone that fits your personality fits your your learning style so is That's there it. is there any particular YouTube channel you would recommend for this kind of stuff uh not really because you want to keep it really simple. I mean, you know, I can't, I can't recommend because there's so many different ways you can trade the market and you got to find what fits your personality, you know? So people just have to kind of find, you know, find it out on their own a little bit in that sense. But, um, you know, if they want to find a real simple, easy way to, say build up a small account and stuff and you know i'm kind of doing that on my channel getting a little bit better explaining on how i'm doing that mm -hmm. but um you know i can't really i would recommend going on udemy and getting their technical analysis course so they can so it's like an actual udemy course yeah huh interesting let's see what he's talking yeah. about so there's going to be a minor obstacle here, and that's that I was supposed to start this live stream by live streaming it through Zoom, because that would mean that uh, you don't see my you screen on the live stream. Okay. But so like I can set an account up, but I'm gonna to have to like do it on my phone, because I can't show. Obviously, I can't show like putting in my social and all the important stuff. So um, one second. I'm getting distracted there. That's like not important right now. That'll be an issue later. Right <laughs> now I'm showing people we're going to udemy.com and we're searching for technical analysis. Is that right? Correct. Technical anal I'm trying to okay. go on mine and see which which one I purchased. Cuz it really helped me understand how price moves and understanding the psychology of price cuz the stock market is people buying and selling a stock based on value they believe the company is worth. Yeah. I apologize, so by the way, about much, the background noise. Oh, it's all right. So you're pretty much, the price is telling you a crowd psychology of what's going on. And you're just trying to, you know, follow the dips and go with the flow. So but let me look at the courses I bought and see. So technical analysis is a thing. Okay, I thought that was just like a word, like an analysis that is technical, but it is a specific term in finance. Correct. Correct. It's a, like a tool. It's kind of like a tool, like a, uh, a skill you, you have to learn. Okay. Wow, there's so many different, so many different phrases to learn here. <laughs> it's a whole nother world. It's just like drop shifting, you know. It's just like any other business, you got, you definitely got to treat it like a business. And you're looking at your profit and loss every day, every month, and you're going over your trades. It's just like a business. <laughs> so I'm, I'm looking at the comments real quick. I, I didn't have it up, unfortunately. Um, hey, Kieran Broadley, good to see you again. 
It's cool to see. Oh, hey, team. Nice. B gave another $1.99. YouTube's been giving out, like, free super chat things to give to people, which is kind of cool. Um, so, yeah, awesome. thanks, B. And then Johnny Math says, what is the best to buy Solano? Look at that. Somebody asked a question that we covered. Oh, Lucas has the confused listening to Spanish face. <laughs> I can hear, I can actually hear them over there saying something. I could go help, but this is more interesting. <laughs> so the uh, course that I purchased on Udemy is by Frank Bunn. Frank Bunn. Okay. There's like a 30% chance our internet's about to go down. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, we'll, we'll see. All right. So you said it was what technical analysis by Frank Bunn? Correct. With two ends. Okay. Um, Mastering price chart. There's a lot of courses. Holy crap. Mastering price chart it's called yes mastering price chart mastering price charts how to trade four hours is that no, it maybe not the four hour one let me see oh how to trade yeah this is by frank bunn oh you mean it's four hours long yeah okay yep 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 that's it Cool. So I, I, it's probably not completely ethical for me to show you guys this, but technically almost any U, Udemy course, and I'm saying this because I sell Udemy courses, right? But technically pretty much any course you find on Udemy, you can find on like poached websites. So all you have to do to do that is go like copy the title of the course and then go to Google and then search for it. And then you just look at the UR. Oh. Did, uh, oh no, I'm still here. Okay, okay, okay. So then you just go down and you look at the URLs until you find one that isn't Udemy. Like, for example, here's the fifth one. It's called onlinefreecourse.net. And then, boom, there's the course. It's kind of sad. What? <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. It's super easy to find poached courses, like really easy. You lit, you literally just Googled it. Like I can do the same thing for my course. Like if I go to uh, my Udemy, Man. and then I'm going, I don't even remember. What's my dropshipping course name? I don't even remember. <laughs> Curriculum, back to courses. Let's see if I can get my dropshipping course for free. Here we go. Jack's eBay dropshipping companion course. That's right. There we go. Now, if I just Google that, let's see, Udemy, Udemy, and freecourse.gzx, third link, fourth link, and fifth link are oh. free versions of the course. <laughs> oh. Crazy, right? The, the little con about the, neg uh, about the internet, it's all right. So it is actually possible to get them removed. Like basically I could be monitoring these and every time it shows up, um, I, it's, I send a request to the website, prove that I'm the actual owner and then they get deleted. Okay, okay. It's funny too, cause they literally copy and paste like it's basically drop shipping courses except i don't know how they earn money these websites i guess just from traffic and ads probably there's a buttload of ads about video games right here um but okay yeah now now you guys know the unethical secrets of udemy that you can always get almost always get courses for free um so we covered a course to take i guess we can start doing the account setup so the tool that i need to be working with you said is TD Ameritrade? 
Correct. I'm assuming I can just go to tdameritrade.com and make yeah. an account. Let's see. So I'm doing this on my phones, guys, or my phone, because I obviously can't show all of my personal information on a live stream. So let's see. www.tdameritrade.com. Probably spelled that wrong. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, if any of you guys listening, if you want to do this account setup as well, um, I'm literally doing it on my phone. I would do it, like I said, on this screen here. TD Amerit M Trade. But I can't do the whole process because I need to like make passwords and stuff, and I can't show you guys all of that. But this is the website. So if you want to follow along with us we're going to set up accounts here or at least I'm gonna set up an account and we're going to talk more about what to do then moving forward so I will let's see okay I'm on the main screen I'm going to menu open new account there we go and so what information do we need to make an account <laughs> let's see there you go it gives you nice little bulletins Oh, here we go. So you got to first select. Oh, also, I like that the two available languages are English and Chinese. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's no Spanish or like French or anything else. Whoa. Just English and Chinese. Just the business languages, right? Um, okay, so it looks like I have to pick between eight accounts. No, way more than eight accounts. Holy crap. Yeah, there's, a, yeah. there's like 40 Anyone? different accounts you can make. Correct. Holy crap. I selected individual brokerage. I think that's the right one. Correct. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can make all you can make a uh, college plan savings account, traditional IRA account, Roth IRA, um money market account. There's IRAs, all different 401k's. Okay, gotcha. So you cover It's likely that TD Ameritrade didn't start out as offering individual brokerage. They are a big, big company and have like plans that offer employees retirement plans and IRAs and 401ks. And nowadays they offer this service, but like that's not their main, definitely doesn't look like it's their main thing. Yeah. Interesting. Correct. Okay. So we create a new account. We pick individual brokerage out of the 50 different options, which is one of the first ones. Oh, and look. Then we only need three things. We need a social security number or an ITIN. For those of you guys who don't know what an ITIN is, it is a number that anybody in the world can get that allows you to pay US income tax or US taxes. So if you ever need a social security number but you're not an American citizen, you can apply for an ITIN number and get that number. And then you can use that in lieu of a social security number and it can do most of the things except it can't get you any kind of retirement, social security benefits, or a job, which is the main reason that Americans would have a social security number. But hey, hey, Phil's back. Awesome. Good timing, man. Yeah, so Phil joined earlier, Bray. Um, he's currently okay. in Rome and he was getting in a subway to go to a place that he can like stay still and focus more. So I'm assuming he's okay. there now because he joined, but we'll have to wait till we can hear something. But this is perfect because we're literally in step one of the account creation process. I'm gonna wait a little bit. Okay, so it says that there's, hey, hey, there he is. Can you hear us, Phil? Yes, he can. Well, we can hear him. There you go, he's almost there. Dang, he's almost there. <laughs> Hey Phil, or Philly, Philly. Hey, how are you guys doing? Oh, I've got a bad connection. Yeah, I, I can hear some background stuff, but I can't hear him saying anything. Yeah, 
Hold on a second. No worries. Maybe he's gonna switch to their Wi-Fi. I will start filling this out, so I guess I can show this. These are the, th oh, it's backwards, isn't it? Yeah, that doesn't work. Um, so we go to TD Ameritrade, we select individual brokerage account, and there's three things that you will need. You need social security number or ITIN. Uh, if you don't have a social security number and you don't have an ITIN, then you have to fill out a form to get an ITIN. Um, I think it's fairly cheap, but I'm not completely sure. It's time consuming, like it may take a couple months to actually do that process. But I just want you guys listening who are like non-US people, don't think that you can't do this because you're not US. You should always assume you can do something, you just need to do some initial setup that's different than people who are in the US. But most opportunities in the US that are online are also opportunities to foreigners. It's just the setup looks a little bit different, okay? So then we need foreign tax ID, passport, or visa number, and your employer's name, address, and phone number. Huh. I guess I just use my registered business address? I'm employed by myself? I guess I'm my employer? We'll see. Yeah. Hey, Amine's here. What's up? This is a Moroccan. Good to see you, man. I need to learn how to say hello in Dariha. I don't know how to say hello. Any of you know how to say hello in Arabic? I should know this. I don't. <laughs> um, okay. So, I'm going to start filling this out. Hopefully by the time I finish, someone else is here or joined or whatever. I know that this part is quite boring. I apologize. First name, email. Do you want to, while I'm doing this, Lucas, do you have any questions you want to ask Bray? So Bray, Lucas has some, he has more, like significantly more experience doing trading than I do. Like he trades with cryptocurrency and that stuff mostly. Whereas I, I've never Bray? really done anything. So if you guys want to chat, I, I can just I've never made up money with it though. I've, uh, I've, I've resigned to holding, but I would like to find ways to make money more uh, regularly with it if I could. Um, so I, like, I have a Robinhood account now, but I don't know how to go about, I guess the watch list is the thing that I need the most for sure. Having a good watch list so that I know what trades to set. Cause right now I just don't, I really just don't blue chip stocks. Blue chip stocks. Okay. Okay. That's cool. I yeah, have an well, idea. First, first you want to, first you want to see what type of style of trading you want to do. You want to swing trade. Do you want to be an investor where you just put your money into a certain stock for over 10 years or more? Or do you want to be a day trader? Are those the big so, three? What do you say? Are those the big three? Like, is there yeah. another kind? No, those are the three big personality. Okay. Trade investor, trade. swing trader, day trader. Day Correct. trader tries to buy and sell on the same day. Swing trader buys and sells in like a couple days investor is like long long term long term warren buffett style okay yeah. so basically investor is when you have money but your money isn't working so you convert it to a forum where it's increasing in value theoretically over time yep. kind of you could also be like uh like if you invest in a startup or something like that it could be a risky investment, like you don't have a lot of money, but you believe in it. So you're, yeah, you know. yeah. So the same. Yeah. That there's riskier stock investments and less risky long-term investments. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So how about this? Um, so you're that. What was the platform? Robinhood, right? That's the one you use to analyze, right, Bray? No. That's the one no. you use to you, trade. Used to, yeah, that's the one I used to trade. Oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah. All right. But you you want TD Ameritrade first. So, uh, I mean, right now I'm just kind of an investor, but I guess I'd like to move more into swing trading and day trading. Um, but I I, I I never really know what to what to try and trade. Um, obviously, blue chip stocks aren't really necessarily what you want to do. What's blue chip okay. stocks, guys? No, we don't know these things. Every Com time we uh, use common, a phrase, we have names. to define it. Uh, okay. Google, Disney, if you know what a stock name is, it's probably a blue chip. 
why is it blue chip? What's the what's that reference to? Is that a poker term? It's a big market cap, uh, proven proven sustainability. Yeah. So, blue chip stocks are pretty much stocks that are household names. You know, names that everybody knows. They get the term blue chip because yeah, they're big names and they're more for long term stuff. Okay. So generally, if you're day trading, you wouldn't be. What if you're swing trading? I mean, day trading, you can. You can look at it, too. You can do uh, what's called options. You know, I don't want to jump into those waters too much, you know, right now. But you can day trade, you know, any price range, any uh, any stock. It's just based on your personality, based on how much money is your account. And uh, yeah. Options. This gotcha. Is so to try and term. to try and swing trade or day trade with uh, blue chip stocks, I need more cash. Correct. Correct. Gotcha. Correct. So the alternative to a blue chip stock is a penny stock. Correct. Is that it? Well, there's, not, there's either penny no, or blue chip. In, in between two, there's mid cap stocks. Mid cap. Okay. When I hear penny stock, I think of Wolf on Wall Street. Because <laughs> it wasn't basically what they would do is they would buy really cheap stocks and then call people and convince them they were worth way more and sell them at inflated rates to those people who were ignorant, right? I think. Yeah. But that's kind illegal clean, because right? why is that illegal? There's inflating. there were a lot of predatory sales tactics they were using, like and there was basically they were the... straight up lying. Okay. Yeah, and there's inflating the stocks, you know, the those penny stocks, they can only take so much money. They're capped. So they were inflating all these stocks that weren't worth, worth nothing. Okay, so they were getting they were middlemanning, convincing somebody with money that something was worth a lot, buying it at the cheap rate, <laughs> taking advantage of their ignorance, selling it off to the person. And then they basically yep. got ten thousand dollars for two dollars. They in wouldn't goods. sell. They wouldn't sell to the person because they were such a successful brokerage firm. They bought stock, sold a bunch of different stock of the same name until the price went up, and then sold their the stock that they had bought originally at a cheap price. Okay. So that's what they did with um, the the shoe company. What was that? What was the name of the shoe company? Steve Madden. Uh, that was like the biggest fine that Jordan Belfort actually got was because that, I think it was like a multiple tens of millions. Uh, That's insane. Deal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I need oh, to that figure. They they let me put in my non-U.S. phone number. That's so sweet. <laughs> yeah, I'm still signing up for the account. One second. Seven six two one eight four six one. Okay. All right, so on the first page of this, I needed to put in my name, my email address, my billing address, and my phone number. It was $130 million in two hours. Jesus. That's ridiculous. <laughs> uh. Okay, now I'm putting in my email or my birth date, my social security number, and it's asking me if I have citizenship. It's asking me how I will use the account, which, okay, it says either invest for the long term or trade frequently. So I guess I would say trade frequently. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Continue to financial information. Employment status. Our options are employed, self-employed, homemaker, retired, student, and unemployed. What's a homemaker? Does that mean you're unemployed, Housewife. but you don't want to say unemployed because you're, it's like, you're not dishonorably unemployed. You're honorably unemployed because you're taking care of babies <laughs> and stuff? I guess. Yeah. I don't know about that one. I'm it, means just, your, it means your spouse has sufficient income for your family, so you get to be a homemaker. Instead of which has no income. Instead of saying you're unemployed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. 
So unemployed is like the, 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 the not respectful way to not have a job, whereas being a homemaker mm. is the respectful <laughs> way to not have a job, right? Because you do I have guess a job. Being a homemaker also really implies that you have income from a spouse. Okay. Well, all right, I'm self-employed. Can I be a self-declared homemaker? Business employer name. Occupation. <laughs> Air traffic controller, ambassador, analysis. Nice, they got a lot of different options for occupations here. But they... Are you, are you setting up an account? Yeah. Hey, you're here. Awesome. Hey, found a quiet place. Awesome, it, man. Italians are noisy people. Say it again. Italians are noisy people. <laughs> yeah, coffee shops in general are kind of uh, intense. Yeah, yeah. So, so Phil um, Bray is... Do you, do you know him at all? Have you guys interacted? Have you watched any of the videos he's in? Or? I, I remember watching... Um, one of his videos and I said because uh, he trades and I said I trade options okay okay yep well, that turned, but, I, but I was typing can you guys talk about what that means because that just came up earlier and I have no idea what options are I know what options means but not in this context uh, okay um, do, you, do you want to explain or do you want me to explain Oh uh, yeah, I could say a little bit about it. So options is pretty much a financial instrument used to pretty much make a bet on the price. So say you're looking at Apple and say you only have a thousand dollars in your trading account. Well, Apple's currently trading at what two hundred dollars a share, I think, right now. And you know, yeah, you will like only get yeah. You will only be able to beat, you know, buy about three or four shares. So you want to be able to make much money based on three dollars, four dollar moves. So what you can yeah. do is buy an option. An option is saying, "All right, I'm going to buy a hundred shares of this company at a discount because I'm buying it at one time, and it gives you like." You could buy like a hundred, you know, one option contract would be like a hundred thirty dollars. Something like maybe, maybe even 80 bucks, something like that. So okay. essentially you can buy more of the same type of stock and you're just trying to make money off the price movements. Yeah. So it's like a proportional share amount. No. So, um, when when you have uh, one contract for an option, you only lock in a specific price. So you know stocks go up and down uh, regularly. So let's say you want to lock in the price for Apple at two hundred dollars. So maybe if you want to buy that option, you're gonna have to pay five dollars a share. But the minimum you can do is one contract, which is a hundred shares. So if you want to lock in, like uh, what? Braylon was saying, if you only had a thousand dollars, let's say you want to lock in the price for two hundred dollars for Apple, you can get two contracts. That means for two hundred shares, you locked in that price for let's just say one month, right? So your thousand. So what happens is, um, if Apple. Uh oh. Goes up to right that your thousand dollar doubles so you doubled your money because it went up because you only paid five dollars to lock in the price so when it goes to 210 uh you basically could make ten dollars if you exercised your option does that make sense options is a very very tricky subject i mean yeah, you I'm still thoroughly to confused. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Still <laughs> the stock market. So, so basically, you know. So basically, you know, just think like everything is going. Stocks are always changing up and down, right? So, um, if people want to just lock in the price for 
a, a short amount of time or you know whatever amount of time can we uh, pause then, for a second understand what you mean what when you, you say lock in the price yeah what do you mean by that so so you know how so, you know how uh farmers uh make contracts based on like corn and stuff with you know yeah. other mm -hmm. producers coming so that's pretty much what you're doing you're buying a contract at a set price and you're you're you know you're 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 buying that country you're saying all right i'm gonna buy 100 shares of this company at this set price so and okay so could... once you lock it in you have like an amount of time to actually do that and follow through oh Correct. okay okay gotcha yeah. so say that you lock it in at 10 10 dollars whatever it is then you're you have like a month yeah. to follow through with that but then the price of it goes up to 14 dollars you don't have to pay $14. Uh, correct, correct. Uh, gotcha. Okay. okay. No, yeah, you're so, making a deal based on the price, correct. But the minimum and, and so, is 100 shares? Correct. Yeah, that's one contract. So to, do, so to do any options trading with Apple, I need 20 grand. No. Oh, no, no. no. So if, if you bought the shares for 200, then mm -hmm. you need 20 grand. Okay. If you want to buy the option, and the option is five dollars, you only need five hundred dollars. So the option price has nothing to do with the share price. It, the option price goes. I mean, price. in a way, it does because if, if the stock, like if the stock is two hundred dollar, the option is mm -hmm. probably going to be more than a stock that's ten dollar. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to be two hundred dollars. So, like Apple's trading at two sixty five today. I can buy an Apple option yeah. for less than two sixty five. Correct. Correct. Oh, okay. oh yeah, yeah. Obviously, but you know, on the flip side, like it might be seem like a very risky thing because, let's say one month from now, uh, let's say you buy an option for one month, mm -hmm. and uh, let's say two sixty five. You said it was two sixty five. Let's say you lock in that price, two sixty five. But for the entire time you own the option, it's it goes a little bit under, like two sixty, and then your options date just passes. That means um, you lost all your money, right? Because uh, you locked it in for one two sixty five, but mm -hmm. it's worth two sixty. Sorry, Phil, you're breaking up a lot. I mean, obviously, you're not going to face 265. Worthless. You lost 100%. Oh, sorry. Towards the door. That was cool. We just heard your voice at the same yeah, time that as was, itself. That, that was really <laughs> trippy. I lost 100% of my 265, I think. That didn't end well for me. So, yeah, if, if the uh, price of Apple is below the, your, uh, they call it the strike price that you locked in, if it's mm -hmm. below that, you're not gonna wanna use your option, right? You could just buy it right the normal way. But it doesn't matter because you're locked in. What's yeah, it doesn't the, matter, but you know, there's an expiration date. What's the standard expiration date? You could choose all different, it depends on which one you choose. There's weekly, monthly, and quarterly, I believe. Gotcha. Yeah, and so options, and you could options buy one on blue chip like stocks could go really way. well if you did quarterly or monthly. Correct, correct. So, yeah, it's it's, it's a two way sword for sure. It's a two way sword. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could also it could also screw you. <laughs> I see. <laughs> so yes. there's a question. Uh, if you guys could articulate this, uh, Johnny Maths, Johnny Mathis is asking why use both TD Ameritrade and Robinhood as opposed to just using one? Well, at first, TD Ameritrade was doing fees. They just recently started doing zero commission-free. So now I can do both on one. So before you used both because TD Ameritrade <coughs> gave you more data and allowed you to make better decisions and Robinhood allowed you to do the trades for free. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Robinhood's but, charts are pretty bad. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. So 
that that was a question in the live stream, and now I have a question. I'm in account setup, right? I've added all my personal information, and I've done that. And now, I need to determine how it's going to handle uninvested cash. And this is what it says. Where do you want your cash to be held when it's not invested? It will automatically transfer uninvested cash into this account every day. I have two options. Either um, a deposit account at a bank, and it says that there's $500,000 in insurance for that, or my brokerage account where it's protected by a different kind of insurance. Um, I think it really only matters if you're going over 250,000, but if you have cash that is unsold, or that you, you sold a stock and now there's cash, I think it goes into your bank account and you would have to transfer it back into TD your brokerage. Uh, okay, yeah. so this is the part where I'm, if I selected brokerage account, then I would only get money when I choose to withdraw it. Correct. It wouldn't go out of the TD Ameritrade system, so to speak. Correct. Not until you, not until you, you manually did that. Isn't that ideal, I think? Yes. Okay. Yep. Cool. Until you have more than $250,000. I'm not worried yeah. about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not yet, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's review your information. Contact info, personal info, financial info. I like how it was just like the first bracket for everything. Annual income, net worth, liquid net worth. I don't know the difference between net worth and liquid net worth, but I'm pretty sure that it's less than $15,000. Right. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Because I, I just rent a place in Nicaragua and I owe eBay $4,000. Those are my assets. <laughs> Actually, I only yeah, owe eBay $3,000. Okay. Yeah, I think it's just for uh, if you buy a house, right? That's not that's not liquid. Uh, so liquid is like accounts, how, so how money in you, accounts. Yeah, how quickly you can um, have that in your hand. Uh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, because you could literally just if you have a bunch of stock you can have the money within like a day or a week or whatever even if it's in an ira account or whatever whereas yeah, if you have a house it's more not that simple certainly more liquid than real estate yeah okay yeah gotcha. okay but uh you know getting back to the options i wanted to uh mention that you know i've never bought an option before Actually, you know, that's a lie. I did buy an option before. But uh, my strategy is on the other side of it. I, I only sell options. Okay. You do what? Okay, okay. You like puts? Yeah. How do you, like, I, how do you sell, sell options, options without buying them? So, so basically, let's take your example. Apple's 265 today, right? <laughs> okay. And so let's say I have... $26,500, right? So I can buy 100 okay. shares. So I okay. buy 100 shares and then I sell. Now, since I own it, I don't have to own it, but it's really safe if you own it, right? So I own it, so I immediately sell one contract at what, like, let, oh. I can choose the price, right? So I can sell one yeah. contract for two, at 265 for one month. So immediately, I got five bucks in my pocket for each share, and mm -hmm. if it is at you know, if the option is not exercised, I just profited five bucks. But if mm -hmm. it's over two sixty five by the end of expiration, or the the person exercises it, I that means I sold it for exactly two sixty five. So it's a way to kind of guarantee the money. That you would you're guarantee going to make. income. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You would guarantee in income, and, and you know the, the the there's two risks, right? One is you miss out on like if it goes to four hundred dollars. <laughs> and then yeah, that's so actually better than just owning the stock because you got that five bucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. 
Okay, yeah, I guess at least you made something, but the other person, you know, they, they made out like a bandit. Yeah, so that's that's the gamble, so it's right? it's safer in that way? You, like, make it it's easier? It's you can guarantee X income, but you can still... Exactly. You can still miss out on uh, extreme gains or uh, excess gains over the guaranteed income because that's the idea when you're selling an option is that you're giving a set price. The fluctuation no longer varies if you're, if you're selling. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. How do you go about selling? What platform do you use for that? So um, I have two accounts. I have a TD Ameritrade and a Schwab. Mm -hmm. And I, on TD Ameritrade, you can download some software called Thinkorswim. And I love that software. That's, um, it's a bit overwhelming at first because it's just a, a huge screen of green and red numbers. But uh, once you get used to it, it's nice to have a ton of information always, always, you know, uh, on one page. So, yep. so I like yep. using a think or swim. Yep, yep. That's why I'm telling them to use uh, TD Ameritrade to open an account. So you can go straight to that. Gotcha. Okay. And you said you could, in theory, at least sell options without owning the stock. It's uh, less safe, though? Exactly. Okay. So, so what if you way sell, is it less safe? So let's take the same scenario. Mm -hmm. Let's take the same scenario. Apple's 265, and I, mm -hmm. I don't own the shares, but I sell one contract, and I, mm -hmm. I receive five bucks, right? Mm -hmm. And let's say through throughout the month, like it ends two sixty four. That's actually wonderful because I made five bucks and I, I didn't it expired worthless and I'm you know I, I'm free and clear. Mm -hmm. But what if it goes to four hundred bucks? If it goes to four hundred bucks, I have to buy it for four hundred and sell <laughs> and it sell for two sixty five. Oh got you. Yeah, that that would suck. <laughs> Yeah. See, I have to, I have to fulfill the obligation, right? Yeah, no matter what, it's, it's a literal contract. Exactly. Yeah. So you, you, if you're doing that kind of situation where you're selling these options contracts, then you benefit more when stuff doesn't change too much, and you benefit less yeah. when something changes a lot. Technically, you benefit even more if it goes down when you're selling. Yeah, that's right. Ah, that's okay. Uh, one moment, guys. I got to take care of something. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You know, you benefit when it goes the one direction, but not the other direction. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah and, uh, you know, so basically, since uh, they stopped charging fees, my strategies mm -hmm. changed. I used to sell. I used to sell options maybe like two or three months out, right? But uh, recently, I've been selling options two weeks out, and it expires, and I sell two more weeks. Expires and sell two more weeks. Gotcha. And is that that's been a successful strategy for you? I mean, I've only been doing it like um, about a month and a half now. But it's really good. So, so you've so done like, it like um, three iterations. Yeah, kind of. I've done it. I, I must have traded like eight or nine trades. But um, <laughs> it's pretty good because if you think about it one way, since I'm selling options, like if you rent something for if you rent something for three months, mm -hmm. the daily price is cheaper than if you rent it for one week, right? Mm -hmm. Always. So. So it's the same with options. So if I sell an option that's three months duration, the mm -hmm. daily value is lower. So if I only sell two weeks out, like I'm gonna make more money. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So the shorter it is, the better it is for the seller and the worse it is for the buyer. Yeah, kind of, you know, because it's a higher premium. <clears throat> that makes sense. That makes sense.
Sorry, they're uh, they're fixing the TV right next to me. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so uh, you're Jack's roommate in uh, Nicaragua? Kind of. So there is an uh, there is an apartment building, uh, and we basically we live on the the top floor. Uh, there are two apartments, but because everybody knows each other, it is often treated as only one apartment. Uh, but I, I live in the other apartment. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Do you but, have a yeah. YouTube channel? No, I don't have a YouTube channel. Um, I'm uh, I'm actually in uh, uh, online boot camp right now to learn programming. Okay. Okay. Good. Oh. Yeah. Get into you have that a blockchain. YouTube channel, right, Brett? Yep, I do. Nice. I gotta check that out. I want to get more. I want to get more into stocks because I've like I've been holding stuff for a while, but I've just been holding, and uh, I don't have that kind of time. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you. Yeah. 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 Why don't Why don't you try? Uh, like, what do you What do you have? Can I ask? What do you hold? Uh, I can pull up. Give me one second. Let me grab my phone. It holds all my information. Okay. Because uh, I would suggest to him like something really uh, easy is just uh, like. Uh, buy a, a hundred shares of a, a dividend company that you like and then sell an option on it, right? So you could get the dividend and the option and um, it'll be pretty safe, I think. Ah, here we go, here we go. Yeah, there's so many option strategies out there, man. Oh man, man there's, there's like dozens. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So for so I own some ETFs, but I'll just ignore that for now. Um, outside of that, I've got five shares on ETF. You can. Yep. Yeah, they have options. Okay. Um, let's just stick. With, we'll stick with stocks for now. Um, I own five of uh, Altria, three okay. Disney, seven Ford, five Uber, and one Alibaba. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah. So you don't have a hundred shares in one thing. No, <laughs> not at all. I think maybe I could do oh, it with okay. Ford. I don't know. Yeah, I could. I could do it with Ford. Ford. Okay. Everything else is everything else is uh, like I said. They're blue chip stocks, so these are these are pricier. Yeah. Hmm. I, I was looking at Ford mm -hmm. just the other day. I like. I like. It's Ford like a lot. nine I think bucks, right? Yeah, it's like, and they have solid dividends. It's eight ninety seven right now. Um, but they they're they're looking at some like solar deals. Uh, they're partnering with Volkswagen. They've started doing. Um, if you guys have ever been to San Francisco or New York, uh, there's like, bike and scooter rental is really really blown up. Uh, just having like little electric things lying around all over, and Ford is Ford is getting into that market a lot too. Um, so I think that they're one of the better car companies to own right now. So. Yeah. So that's cool. You know, that's one thing cool. you could do, like if you wanted to do that right now, like for example, one thing you could do is is eight ninety seven, right? Mm -hmm. So you buy a hundred shares for uh, eight hundred and ninety seven dollars, mm -hmm. and then you could sell, and you can sell a call option at nine dollars, right? So that means um. You give someone else the right to buy it from you for nine dollars, and you know, if it's like, let's say you sell it to last like two or three months, you'll get like forty bucks. You'll get like forty bucks. I'm I'm just guessing. And um, if there's a if there's a dividend during that time, uh, you would you would get that dividend as long as okay. As long as the other party doesn't um, exercise the option. Okay. But they, so really, they in don't order for me to sell any option, I need to have a hundred shares or something. Yeah. Um, or you could just do it uh, naked. 
<laughs> Meaning you don't, don't own. Do you don't own. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It means you don't own the shares. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a, I'm, I'm a wimp. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> What's the consequence oh. if you break your contract? Oh, there's there's no such thing. Yeah. <laughs> you either pay up or you just not able to trade no more. <laughs> okay, so the consequence I mean, is you lose your ability. And you'll get, to you'll trade. get, and you'll get like actually sued with stocks and stuff like that. Yeah, um, just like with anything, they can come after whatever assets you own, right? Okay. You, you need to, you yeah, need to settle. It's, it's a bigger deal than like eBay debt. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you need to, you need to settle up every day. It's not just at the end of the option, right? You need to settle up every day. Okay, sorry about that, guys. I left. Do you, I do you remember that? With something. Um, yeah. Do you remember uh, the movie uh, Trading Places? Yeah. Right. Do you remember? You know, when at the end, when um, the 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 Duke brothers were uh, like, the you know the the old the two old guys were on the trading room floor and they were freaking out, right? And then the uh, they come down to the floor and, you know, they say it's time to settle up. That's what they're talking about. Yeah, it happens every day. So, so for example, let's say you sell a contract uh, naked, right? And um, so you can't just have no money. You need, I'm just gonna give an estimate. It's not precise. But you gotta have, let's say, twenty percent of what you need to fulfill your obligation. Does that make sense? So a little bit, yeah. For I, example, I missed out uh, what you guys were talking about, so I'm not on the same page. But that's okay. <laughs> so and, I'm, I'm and in the case where it goes from like two sixty-five to four hundred, like you would you would lose you would need to pay yeah, like a hundred dollars per share and because every contract has a minimum of a hundred shares that's a really big amount of money yeah you you need to put that in right when they say hey uh it's it's four o'clock put it in mm -hmm. yeah okay so i i have question now um i am finalizing my td ameritrade account and there's a couple options that i need to pick um, so basically it says, which trading features would you like to include? And I can pick margin privileges, options trading, futures, Forex, or cash account only. I would just click options trading. What's margin privileges? Oh, so th th my, my example of uh, selling it naked, you need margins for that. Okay. But mm -hmm. to that just you get you get leverage. To just do day trading, I just need to have options trading. Hello. Cor correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Because it doesn't. The only right. four no, options I can pick. Day trading. Oh, what you say? Sorry, Phil. You're breaking out. Like it, we hear the first half of what you say, and then not the rest. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Um, so there's four, four things I can pick, and it looks like I can pick all. Like, it's four or I don't have to pick like one of them. Yeah. And the options are I mean, margin privileges, options trading, futures, and forex. I would, I would, I would, I would go ahead and click margin and options because you know there's no penalty for having them extra. Okay. But just you know. If you're focusing on one thing, just don't let them distract you. And so now it says select an options trading level. There's tier yeah. one, tier two, tier two, and tier three. <laughs> yeah, just pick, uh, just do tier one, and then you can always request to uh, increase it. Okay. This is so confused. Wow. Okay. <laughs> There's so many terms here. I don't know anything so, about stocks. So, so all today has just been like. No, so what it means is. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. One, <laughs> two, three. So what it means is tier uh, tier one means um, like I was telling you the option of uh, you buy the stock and then you can sell the call. That's tier one. Right. So. If you want a higher tier where you don't own the stock and you sell the option, that's a higher tier. That's two or three. Calls and puts. Right, so every spreads uncovered. Yeah, so, 
Yeah, uncovered means naked. Okay, okay. There's a lot of terms here. Nice. I'm learning a lot. Oh man, it, it's it's really complicated, guys. But so all these tiers, <laughs> all these tiers is just for options trading. It doesn't have to do with anything to do with day trading. No. Nope. It's it's only options because you can, you have the potential to lose a lot of money. So I understand why it's, Bray earlier was like options is a whole separate thing. We don't need to worry. About it. <laughs> it's a it's a whole financial market in itself. Yeah. But, you know, they created it because it provides liquidity in the market. If people are buying contracts and they're 100 shares each time, those 100 shares are going to come into the market. Okay, I think I'm about to finalize my account. Woo! Your account has been approved for margin privileges. Your account has been approved for tier one covered options trading. Yeah. Cool. Be careful with margins. Okay, and so now I have to pick how I want to fund accounts. So I basically have to fund it from a bank account. Correct, but you don't have to fund it right now if you don't want to. Okay. <clears throat> and so if I wanted to get money out of, if I wanted to invest with money in a PayPal account, I would have to transfer that into a bank account with a routing number. Because that's the only way that I can get money into TD Ameritrade is from a bank account. Or... Uh... Cash out, they have a uh, routing number that you can use now. I don't know if you can use that. Okay, so it would, like, there's no way to use a direct serve. You can use services that provide account and routing numbers, <laughs> but in, in general, you have to be using some kind of bank account. Correct, okay. correct. Good to know. Yeah, I'm used to the world of PayPal being accepted by almost everything. So <laughs> I guess it makes sense that PayPal is not accepted here. Okay, so, official thing. so I'm going to be transferring from my checkings or savings account. Okay. So if I'm probably only going to use TD Ameritrade for charts because I already have stocks and stash and Robinhood. Uh, do I have to put money in? Nope. Nope. Okay. But I need to link a bank account. Yeah, I guess you need a bank okay. account. Well, it, it says you gotcha. can check later. Like, I, I don't have to do this right now. It's just saying, okay, now that you have an account, if you want to load money, how do you want to do it? Or you can do it later. There we go. Yep. So now that you're a member of TD Ameritrade, what you want to do is download the Think and Swim platform. Think and Swim? Yeah, that's an awesome platform. Is that an app? or Think or Swim. What is it? So on the same website, TD Ameritrade. Let me see here. So we're talking about a computer thing. It's it's an we're app. Talking about a yeah, program. I have it on my phone and my desktop. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I need to go download Think Think or Swim. Yep. Okay. So yeah, in the like App Sync Store or swim. and in my computer. Okay. Think or swim. And, and don't worry, at first, at first you're gonna be really confused by it, but don't worry, you're My gonna own. get it. I'm uh, used to life, yeah. man. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm confused remember, by everything in the beginning. I remember when I was watching YouTube videos and they're pulling up these charts on TD Ameritrade, I was like, how can they read this? <laughs> you know? But now it makes sense. It okay, makes so... Sense. I'm trying to get Think or Swim, and it goes to the TD Ameritrade site and asks me to log in. So you have to log in to download. It's something you download? Yes, you download. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'm downloading it on my computer and here. But it looks like you can't download it until you make an account. Okay, so let's log into my account. Log in. Thank <laughs> you.
Yeah, it's it's so powerful. You know, they can't just let anyone use it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what what does this do exactly? It's just a way to look at. Okay, so you're you're looking at stock, and the where the whoa, word those are some are. fancy charts. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap! Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. what I'm talking about. It's very overwhelming in the beginning, but you'll get it. You'll get it. I'm trying to get to the yeah. point where I can access it on my phone and access it on my PC, and then I'll figure out understanding it. Yeah, it, it might be easier to download it on your phone. Um, it's just in the App Store. Yeah, I'm downloading it now, doing both. Good. Oh, huh, okay. Looks like. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Eric just called me three times. I think he found out about the helmet. <laughs> <laughs> you should explain to them what that means. <laughs> um, my mom is giving me a motorcycle helmet as a present, uh, and our friend Eric is visiting um, Nicaragua uh, this week. So he has to bring He's it. He's going to be here in three days. He doesn't. Yeah, but he doesn't have a checked bag, so he has to wear it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or I don't know, hold it. You should just hold it. But I'm like pretty sure idea. he's just gonna not hold bring it. it. <laughs> I don't think he's gonna have the option, dude. I don't think he'll say no. And we told like I'm telling him if if, if I if I talk to him that it's it's for him. He's gonna he's gonna value it. I think that he would rather deal with a helmet than ride on a motorcycle without a helmet. <laughs> All right, so it's still downloading. Um, I'm trying to do the account thing, but I have to like log into it on the computer and show information. So I'm waiting for the phone to download. Okay. Wow, so many terms we've covered. All right, let's look at the chat again real quick. Anything? Oh, nice, okay. No more questions. Cool. Yeah, it's only, it's like halfway through uh, download. Cool. <clears throat> cool, cool. So, one really good uh, study material that I would uh, definitely take a look at is uh, Japanese candlesticks. Japanese candlesticks? By, by uh, Steve. Oh, uh, one second, I'm, I'm logging in and I made the live stream go black while I log in and I finalize my account. So I'm, I'm kind of distracted. Okay, okay. <laughs> So what do you do for work, uh, Philly? Me? Uh, I am actually uh, a teacher at a university in Tok in Japan. Oh, dang, okay. Ah, so you were the one who said you were from Japan, or you were listening Yeah, well, I, I live... Living. Hold on one, hold on one sec. Yeah, I uh, I live in uh, Japan right now, working at a university there. Nice. Now you're the one that's saying that the the living is not that bad. It's it's pretty cheap, uh, I think. I I spend roughly uh, a Oh, spam roughly how much? A, li a little over a thousand. Okay. Dang. And um, 
yeah, it's not it's not bad. Yeah, and I'm I'm here in Rome for a, an educational conference for a couple of days. Awesome, <laughs> man. What do you teach? Uh, I teach so I teach Japanese students um, in English uh, various curricula. Cool. So like uh, there's di- you know there's different programs, but you know the purpose is like not to study English per se uh, because they should already know, but. Um, it's like a regular uni- in- international university, and um, you know. So, like, they could take a history lesson <laughs> from you stuff in like English. Communication stuff like that. Yeah, like you know, gotcha. um, what's cool is I can make my own, you know, courses and stuff and submit them if I want. That's pretty cool. Okay, so I was able to start installing this thing or swim thing on the computer. Can I do this way? Yeah. Um, just for anybody who's following or watching this video in the future, once you create an account, um, you can't just Google Thinkorswim. You have to create your account, log into your account, and then search for Thinkorswim in TD Ameritrade, and then an option to download it will come up. If you don't do that, then it's going to be in a loop of trying to log into your account every time because you'll see the page, but you can only log in. You can't click download. So I had to deal with that just right now, and it was fine. Yeah. You just have to log in and then search for Thinkorswim in the, the actual TD Ameritrade search bar, and then that brought it up. OK. Have, have you opened it? Are you looking at it? It's still downloading. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, on my phone, it finished downloading. <laughs> Y'all excited? We also both just tried to download on the same thing, so. Uh, yeah, fun. and we're both having a call. Okay, except yeah. on the same uh, internet connection. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now it's asking for okay my login info. Okay. <laughs> All right, logging in. You know, I think there was a commenter who, was that you, Phil? No, because you already do trading. Somebody last week commented and us doing this is a result of their comment, but that person isn't here. So that's funny. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so I logged into the app, um, and now it starts, the default screen is a watch list, and then there's a bunch of stock. Okay, on your app, okay, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So do you wanna take a look at a uh, stock? I guess, yeah, I don't know. I just, I just got this app because Bray said to get it. I don't know what's happening. Yeah, so let's let's take a, let's take a look at something. So uh, you get an idea. Of, I think if you if you see the um, all the numbers, it, it might make sense. Okay. In addition to confusing you. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me let me finish the download from my computer because then I can show what's going on to the people on the live stream, which would be better than what I'm currently doing. One second. Okay. It finished downloading, so now I'm installing it. And uh, you can you don't have to actually trade. You can just use the software for uh, like a paper account, mean, uh, not, meaning um, just a fake account to practice just to research, trading. basically. Yeah, like they do yeah. in schools. And just yeah, just to see if your strategies are gonna work. Oh, I have done that actually. I remember in high school, I took a yeah. class and we did paper trading. And that's like you act like you buy the stocks and then you track like as if you had them, but it's all like, you know, you never actually bought anything. 
correct. And uh, <laughs> yeah. T Ameritrade lets you do that all on their platform, so you can do it, you know, digitally, and you don't have to write it down. You can do it and can see it in actual real time. That's useful. Mm. Okay, run, think, or swim. So is this what's in the background of a lot of your YouTube videos, Bray? Correct, yep. Ah. Cool, okay. We're almost there. <coughs> Sorry, the pace is so slow here. Well, no, it's just, that's the process. <laughs> So, uh, Braylon, do you trade any options ever? No, not yet. Uh, I'm going to get into it. I'm going to trade options on the SPY and uh, Nugget Gold. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, yeah. I, You know, uh, half of my trades are with uh, gold mining stocks. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. Is yeah, that, does that pretty... actually mean gold mining stocks, or is gold mining one of these other phrases we need to learn? <laughs> no, no, no. no uh, a, new, Newmont it, Mining. It, it, so it's, it's, a, you know, it's a mining company. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> I met this guy who, like, uh, so at one point I participated in this event where 20 people who earn money online live together for like a month, right? And one of the dudes there, his whole life was set basically because he had worked in Australia with these huge mining machines. And I don't know what they were mining, but basically what they would do is find a bunch of land and blow it all up and then like collect the dust particles with these big machines. And then they got something out of that. So he did like a whole presentation of driving the giant machines and what it was like. Cause it's, you're basically driving a, like 64 wheeler which is huge like that's ginormous right but that, that was kind of cool i'm just trying to distract myself while this app loads <laughs> that's cool though that's yeah. cool dang sounds exciting wish i could blow stuff up <laughs> so i can't tell if thinkorswim is actually installing updates or if it is like frozen did it, uh, did it take no, a while uh, for it, it to update when you guys first ran it? Yeah. I'm okay. still installing updates. Yeah. No, every, every few days it installs updates. Okay, cool, cool. Um, so for, for those of you guys listening, um, anybody of you who has any questions, um, right now we're literally just waiting for stuff to download and install before we can progress. So this is time we could be using to answer any of your questions. If you are listening, answer them in the live chat. You can also join this call if you're interested in participating. Very nice, very nice. So what type of uh, trading are you thinking about doing, Jack? Are you thinking about day trading, swing trading? Day or swing, definitely. Okay. Definitely. Um... How much are you trying to put in? Just like a hundred bucks, probably. Mostly, I, I know that there's a part of me that, like, when I play World of Warcraft and stuff, I, I mess with the economies, and I like, like, seeing numbers and trying to predict when they're going to gain value and lower value. And I understand that I'm currently doing this in a way that doesn't get me any money at all, and I need to just convert it so that part of me is actually doing it with me. Because it's something I'm already doing, you know, like... Like, obviously, World of Warcraft isn't the same as the real-life economy, but it's similar in the sense that, like, there's certain actions that happen that cause the economy to change, and the value of things changes drastically in response to the demand for things. Um, for example, like, uh, World of Warcraft has different phases, right? And yesterday, they started Phase 2, which means that you are rewarded for killing people outside. So this now means that everywhere outside is incredibly dangerous and all of the materials related to combat are now really, really inflated and really valuable. So you, it was public data, public knowledge that this change was going to happen. 
So if you invested prior to the change in all of the undervalued materials, knowing this change would happen, then it happens and they become more valuable. That's the same kind of logic I'm assuming you use in, in these environments, right? You just yeah, kind of yeah, understand yeah. the big scene and predict how people are going to respond in it and put yourself in a situation where you're gaining money, hopefully. Correct. That's more for, you know, investing wise, you know, right there or, you know, holding position for months at a time. So could you, could you share, what do you guys think? All right. I want to talk about mentalities, right? Because so we've determined that you can be investing, you can be swing trading, you could be day trading. What do you think? Can you pinpoint what mentality works for investing? what mentality is better for swing trading and what mentality is better for day trading okay so the mentality of a day trader is someone who is very disciplined that's what it comes down to someone who's self-aware and who is disciplined okay that's what it comes down to if you know that you have trouble of following the routine, if you have trouble of being disciplined, if you have trouble of going to the gym three times a week, you do not need to be a day trader. Okay. Swing trading is is saying that you want to make some money on the side and you don't want to spend two to three hours a morning looking at a screen. Okay. You know? So essentially when you're swing trading, you can look at a screen for like an hour to determine if the stock's at a price point where you want to buy or sell at, and that's it. You know, it's really a slowed down process and a way to make money more progressively than just regular investing. Okay. So, you know, you don't, you're not really worried about too much of your discipline. You're not really worried about too much of other stuff. You just have to, you know, follow the process, the system that you created for yourself. Now, when it comes to investing, you have to be very future focused. You have to be thinking the long term because it's so funny when you go on Facebook and you see these people talking about in the in the Robin Hood groups on Facebook, they're talking about they're going to invest in this company. You know, I'm going to put uh, five hundred dollars and invest in this company because of this news and that news and this news. And three months later, four months later, when the price goes down on them, they can't take it no more. They sell it, and they don't realize there wasn't investing. They were speculating. So, oh, if you're that's a choose, you just you just you just made a moment there. That's a sentence. Yeah. Investing versus speculating. Correct. So it's speculating because they thought it would increase in value. They didn't have a long-term vested interest in retaining it. That's what Correct. investment is. They would just. Yes, it was just thinking about the money. And when you're investing, you're not thinking about the money. You're thinking about value increasing. That's okay. it. So it's come, you know, day trading is the most risky. You got to be the most disciplined and you got to be the most self-aware. Investing is more relaxed, but you got to be extremely self-aware that you're investing for the long term. You're looking for like what you were talking about plays that come into future with seasons or you know in cycles definitely for sure goes with investing and then in swing trading you're looking to make money just like a side hustle you're looking at charts hour or two here a day and you're just buying and selling based on price points okay okay cool so why why do you day trade and not swing trade like personally why what's your thoughts on that because i i like how it's more of the like solo solo entrepreneur aspect where it's all on you you know you're the one that's pushing the buy and sell button so it's all on you how much money you're going to make every day so i just love that aspect of that you know i just love that that it's in my complete control of how okay. much money i make it that makes sense and it's something you can look at every day uh, which is like necessary for future progress and the momentum and all that so there's two questions Correct. in the chat 
Um, we have one question from Carlos and another question from Johnny. So Carlos Hernandez says, is it necessary to start with a minimum budget? <clears throat> uh, I mean, the more money you have is definitely better. Um, I know you saying you was going to start out with a uh, hundred dollars and stuff, you know, you know, that's a good start. You know, you're going to, that's how you're going to begin. You know, you're just going to buy one or two shares here and there just so you can get the feeling, yeah. get the feeling. You see how price affects your, your account, how it affects it negatively, how it affects it positively, how you feel, you know, when it affects your account. So it's all commission free. So essentially, you know, you can turn $300 to a million dollars, which is, you know, pretty damn hard, but, uh, Technically a possible. good, a good, uh, account balance to start off with, you know, like a really good one, I would say is like 4,000 or more. Okay. It's around that. So, around that so to learn, you don't technically need anything because you can practice this dry by just doing paper, which they provide a system for. Um, but to actually make money, it's going to be easier if you have more money. However, you have to also understand that you putting in more money means you could potentially also lose more money. So, well, you just got to understand money management rules, mm -hmm. you know? So just because you have, you know, 4,000, 3,000 in your account doesn't mean you trade 2,000 a trade, you know? You yeah. want to use like... 20% of your account per trade, you know? So the more money you got, the more of your 20% is going to be able to do per trade. Okay. And Johnny's asking, you were talking about Japanese candlesticks and then I distracted you. Oh, and then our thing finally finished downloading and installing. There you go. Yeah. So the Japanese candlestick is pretty much is what you're gonna see. So when you're looking at the charts, it's gonna be a green bars and red bars. And that is gonna give you the representation of the price. Oh, so, so it's a specific if, kind of chart. True, yeah, exactly, yep. Okay. Exactly. So the guy who made this popular and you know, got everybody to using this uh, charting. His name's Steve Nelson, okay. and he made a book about it. So it's it's really good to understand. You know, why is this bar so fat, and why is this bar so small? And, and okay, what's so this is weight? another key phrase to understand. Correct. Yes. And just to refresh people's brains, we have. Limit sales, swing trading, stop loss, profit target point, market order, fees, open or market open time, day trading, watch list, options, volume of sales, and Japanese candlestick charts. There we go. <laughs> okay, cool. So now I think I can yeah, look at this. Alright, so for the so earlier, Carlos, you asked about if it's necessary to start with a minimum budget. <laughs> So you see how I have this think or swim thing here on the live stream right now, I'm about to log in. You can literally toggle live trading or paper money. If you toggle it to paper money, then you're like dry doing everything. So you, you're literally practicing with nothing and you don't spend anything. You just like be like, well, let's say I bought this at this price at this time. And then you wait later and then you're like, okay, now let's say I sold this at this price this time. How much did I earn? How much did I lose? It's completely possible for you to practice this and become very comfortable with how it works without spending a single penny. Cool. Awesome. So I'm going to yes, log in sir. now. I'm going to set mine to... Should I like experiment on paper first? Or what do you think, Bray? Uh, yeah, definitely for sure. Okay. Yep. Okay. So I'm just gonna start it dry. All right. Um, Gully. Oh, I shouldn't say my password. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I just logged in to the Thinkorswim thing. It is okay. initializing. Ooh. Thing. 
So am I going to be bombarded by a bunch of like charts and stuff? Yeah, yeah, it's going to pop up. And you're going to have all of this over here and all it's just going to look all mess. It's going to look mess. Uh, yeah, no and it lies. says simulated trading at the top left. Yeah. Okay, I got to sign a bunch of agreements or accept a bunch of agreements. And I'm going to minimize this so that we can see you. Can you say something, Bray? I want to test something real quick. Yep, I'm here. Okay, I gotta change my view real quick. Speaker view. Ah, there we go. I had his video pinned. Okay, awesome, great. Okay, so now I got your image in the top top right. <clears throat> I got Thinkorswim open, and I'm confused. <laughs> you say, oh, you Man, I wish I could see your screen, man. Uh, let's if see. you look at the YouTube stream, you could, but you're watching. You're in this on your phone, so. Right, right. I was wondering if they're gonna give me like a little preview, so I can see. <laughs> uh, but um. Okay. You can normally so... share screens on Zoom. Is that not an option right now? No, that is an option. I can do that. One second. Cool. It's just all tests. Um. One second. Yeah, that'd be great if I can see it. Okay, so I share this. And so now you guys can see it. There we go. Yes. Awesome. And the YouTube audience can see it, and they can see our faces. Cool. Awesome. All right. So you want to go to the top, right under it says total all accounts. Uh... Total all accounts. Okay, I see simulated trading, account info. Right. Top middle. Top middle. Top middle. Yep. Okay, oh, and you click that on thing charts. In the way? Click on charts. Charts. To the right. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Now you see where you can type there right under. Yep. Yeah. Right there. So go this is where I would put in the, the symbol of a stock so I could analyze it. Correct. Okay. Correct. That's another thing we need to know. Stock symbols. Okay. So put in a B A B A. B A B A. Are they all four? Oh no, they're not all four. Okay. This is Alibaba. There we go. Is Alibaba right. considered a blue chip? No, not exactly because. It's like one of the it's, biggest it's, marketplaces. It is, but it doesn't have a long-term history. You know, it's yeah, still... Yeah, and it's not quite a household name either. Yeah. One day... Well, in the U.S., yeah. it's not a household name, but it's like a huge That's marketplace. The, this is the U.S. stock exchange. Okay. So it doesn't matter if it's like hugely popular in the rest of the world. If it's not popular in the U.S., it might not be considered blue chip. Exactly. It's usually like a 25 year length to like Disney, is the, the blue chip that is like the classic example, or Philip Morris. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because okay. like a Snapchat, you know, everybody uses Snapchat, but that's definitely not a blue chip stuff. Okay. So there's a bunch of little greens, there's a bunch of little reds, there's red dotted lines going up and down. <laughs> All right, so click on the top right and see where it says drawing. Draw? Drawings on the t on the top right next oh, to yeah, studies. Drawings. Yeah, drawings. Yeah, yeah. Click that. Those are your tools. Okay. Go to drawing tools. Okay, drawing tools. And then go to the right and click on the pointer. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, okay, drawing tools. And oh, the, the trend on. line, the trend line, the trend, right, uh, right under it, right under trend line. Right okay. there. Yeah. There we go. Now with that, you can, if you've seen all my videos, you can long press and zoom in onto places that you want to, you know, look in more. So you can like drag and hold. Drag and hold anywhere. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. It's like looking at a certain part of the. Oh, and it zooms in to just there we that go. part. It zooms in, yeah. There okay. we go. 
So sure. now this is where the this is where the Japanese candlesticks comes into play. These are exactly what you're looking at. So each green bar represents that there were more buyers than sellers. Okay, and red bars are the opposite. Yep, and each one of those bars right there, if I, I believe, represents a day. So that's a whole day of trading. Okay, yeah, this is 3-6, this is 3-7, 3-8, okay. Correct. So, <clears throat> if you look at the bottom, take just take one of those big green bars. Okay. And you go to the bottom. Uh, I'm clicking again, okay. Yeah. <laughs> And that will tell you, that's what that's where the price opened up at. So it opened up at 171.50 cents. Okay. And then you go to the top of the green bar, and that's the end of the day. That's where it closed at, 175. Gotcha. So on this day, if you day traded this stock, you profited. Is that right? Um, eh, not exactly. Okay. Not exactly, but. That's just showing you what happened that day. That stock went up four dollars that day. That's representing that there's more buyers than sellers, and that's why that green candle. Okay. So you can take that red candle that you was just at. The top, the top of the candle represents where the price opened up at. Not the, not the wick though. Not the wick, just the, the oh, body. Oh, this of part. It. Okay, gotcha. Yep. So it opened up at 181. And then it went down. There's more sellers than buyers. And went down to the bottom of the candle and it closed at 177. Um, can you explain? Okay, so I see that there's all these candles. They're either red or green, but they all have a line in them. And sometimes the line goes above the box, and sometimes the line goes below the box. And sometimes the line is bigger than the box, and sometimes the line is smaller than the box. Correct. And these are called the wicks. Okay. So the lines are wicks. So the lines are not going through the box. They are on top or on the bottom of the box. Okay. Yeah. Are there any spots where the line is smaller than the box? I don't think so. The line is... Uh, where yeah, where yeah, you there's... only see a box and you don't see any line. That This is the yeah, closest there, one. There, there, this one, too. There, there's, yeah, there's... So the, the, line is, the line is outliers? Wait, or... the, the wick... Okay, so they're not they're not called lines. They're wicks. Wicks, yeah, that's the, right. The wicks, wicks are okay, so outliers. The wicks is showing you where least amount of trades were, sh were purchased and sold. So say so say if you go to that body and okay. it shows you the volume, you see the volume on the bottom? Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh when you click so on that, each one it tells you the volume. Yeah. So I didn't notice so that. Stay on one of them. Stay on one of them. Okay. Okay, so that's seven million shares traded in that one. So at the very bottom of that wick there, there's probably only like three thousand, ten thousand shares traded right there. You know, or maybe a hundred thousand. It's just showing you that that you know that during that time, that pretty much time was not that significant. You know, it has to show you that yes, you know, the price dropped down that low, but it wasn't that many shares traded. That's not where all the action was at. Okay, so basically, the candle is the majority, and the wicks is just uh, like like Lucas was saying, the outliers. Some trades happened there, but it doesn't represent the majority of the trades. Correct, correct. Okay. But now the so, wicks are you. So what's the difference between something like this, which has such a tiny candle that it looks like a literal cross, versus this, which barely has a wick at all, it's just on the bottom, and compared to this one, Can you click on is, the tiny candle's volume? 12,000. 12, 12 million shares. Oh, yeah, 14 million, million. shares. <clears throat> so, we, okay, so see how it, it doesn't have a, a body to it. Yeah. That means there, that means the psychology of the buyer and the psychology of the seller 
were pretty much even that the same amount of tra uh, shares traded pretty much kept the price at an even price around that day and the reason why it's green other than red that means there was more buyers during that even day than there were sellers okay I'm starting to understand this more and so is there a reason the green ones aren't filled in and the red ones are? That's just preference? That's just the the, the, the display you got set, you know, the okay. factory settings. You can change it all. And so these are, the red lines are so some kind have... of, oh, okay, that's date marks. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's probably like the quarterly. That's probably like quarterly, I think. So when you have smaller candles, it doesn't actually mean that there's less volume. It just means that the volume of sellers and the volume of buyers is closer to identical. Correct. Correct. So the bigger the candle, it doesn't it doesn't correlate directly to volume. Only it only correlates to the volume that it's being identified as. Correct. Correct. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So like when it has days when the green bars are really big, that mm -hmm. means there wasn't that many people betting on the price of it going down. Mm -hmm. So the buyers were just able to come in there freely without much conflict. So, so you got to remember, you got to remember that the stock market is a zero sum game. So every time that you're buying a share, someone's selling it. Mm -hmm. And so the size of these candles has nothing to do with the volume. Correct. It's, it's showing the size, showing you how much the price moved. Okay, gotcha. So theoretically, yeah. that's why, like, so it's just a coincidence that the smaller ones have a smaller volume. It's not literal, right? Like, well, it's, it's not, it's not a cool one. It's, 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 okay, so. It has 7 million shares on that small doji, but that's because people were fighting over price. You know, there's people who wanted the price to go up and there's people who wanted the price to go down. So they just kept going back and forth, back and forth the whole day. Instead oh, so the volume trades. is the number of trades. Correct. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That makes a bit more Our sense. Number of shares, number of shares. But say, say that you and me, I buy something from you and then you sell it back to me and I buy it from you and we do that 10 times. That counts as 10 volume in a day? No, no, no. How many shares you bought? How many shares? So if each time, if I bought 10 and then yeah. sold them back to you and we just did that over and over again, so that that'd increases be like the volume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it doesn't necessarily... Okay, okay, I got gotcha. you. Because I'm trying to yeah. understand, like, okay, this one, for example. Wait, where was the example? Um, okay, this one has a volume of 7.5 mil, whereas this one has a volume of 11.7 million, yet the green box looks, like, almost identical in, like, the height. So I need to Correct. get away from thinking about the height and comparing them, because that isn't really... Well, you, you got to dive into that book, the Japanese Candlestick book by Steve Nelson. Okay. It, it breaks it down all this nice and beautifully because I, I remember, I remember, man, looking at this, it was it's like learning Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it comes with looking at the charts constantly and looking at it while the market is open. But you can do that with the uh, on-demand feature with TD Ameritrade. Okay, cool. So, you can do so the next actionable would be to learn about Japanese candlestick charts. Correct. Okay, awesome. I think, because at this point, yeah, it's been about two hours, so... <laughs> that was the setup process. Yeah, yeah, setup. I think we've done pretty much everything now. Um, is there anything you want to cover? I'm probably going to end the stream pretty soon, so any, any, anybody who's listening... Um, you're welcome to ask any questions. Um, we're about to end. I will pay attention to the live chat for like two more minutes. Um, if any of you have any questions that you want us to answer. 
and uh, I'm just gonna put a link to the Japanese candlestick book is uh, on PDF drive so anybody can click on it and start reading the book awesome that's perfect I put it in the comments Um, okay. Cool. That's exciting. I feel like I learned a lot. My brain is, uh, um, my brain is sizzling. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I gotta That's make good. sure to turn WhatsApp off. Yeah, so anyone watching the live stream just saw a few of my WhatsApp messages. <laughs> Alright, so I don't see no one else is asking anything. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna end the live stream. This was really awesome, Bray. I, I like that we were able to actually like work on something specific. I learned a whole bunch of stuff. I gotta look good. more into these things. Good, cool. good, yeah. Just don't try to dive too much into the options trading yet. You know, that's a whole nother world. Just I'm not, I'm not worried about it. I'm just trying to understand this yeah. better. It's interesting. <laughs> right. I found out enough about options trading to decide that I don't know enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, man. Good, I'm glad. So we got to figure out what's happening for next week. What's your, what's your thing? Um. Uh, yeah, let's go. I'm I'm gonna make the uh, same goal. I need to make a uh, hundred dollars a day, four days. Okay. Let's cool. Go. Uh, my thing will be to set up a YouTube ad for identifying retirees. There you go. I actually have to do two YouTube ads because I'm doing another one for another company. So it makes sense for me to also do one for me. <laughs> there you go. Except so the deadline gonna... for mine is next Saturday. The deadline for this company one is on Tuesday. Which means I'll do it on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're uh, targeting, so when they're, your ad is playing for the retirees and the uh, what what type of link are you going to have? I'm going to experiment with a couple different things. Because basically, I could send them straight to the course. But what I want to experiment with first is something that would be easier, which is a free consultation. So basically, I'll have an advertisement. Um, and it'll be like, hey, I'll share some statistics about retirement to try and identify with the emotions that these people are going through. And then I'll be like, if you if you want to consider something about latin america yada yada without having to sacrifice things because basically there's tons of tons and tons of people who are retiring but they don't have enough money to retire so they're looking into how to live incredibly frugally in the united states but i can be like hey if you change where you're retiring you don't have to sacrifice the things that you think you have to sacrifice you can have a good high quality life if you're willing to live in latin america if you want to talk more about this and if you're interested book time with me completely free there you go and that's just to gauge like demand basically and then to actually be talking to these people because if i'm talking to them directly then i'm going to be able to absorb their mentality and know how to create like an actual ad for my course to market towards them but first i need to meet a lot of them dang man you're good you're good <laughs> well we'll see that's all theoretical it, it, once I'm talking to people, yeah, then I'm, then I'm great. But if none of them actually follow through, we'll see. Okay. I think they will, though, because I, w I was on a webinar recently with a bunch of retirees, and the guy who hosted the webinar, literally all he did was he started a Facebook ad campaign and like three days prior and was like, hey, are you interested in retiring in Latin America? Join our webinar to learn more about retirement. And that was it. And we had like 10 participants. So that shows that it's feasible because I can run an ad for way longer. 
But it's also, I think there's more retirees using Facebook than YouTube, but we'll see. Luckily, retirees are super, super easy to uh, target. Target. <laughs> it's like a very specific age demographic, so. Dang. Okay. We'll there see. we go. Yeah, we'll see there what we happens. Are. I'm excited. And the other, so the other thing is I have to help Sweet acquire eBay accounts. Um, and Chris, so Chris is helping because basically in Chris's audience, there's, there's people who have eBay accounts that never use them. And we need to acquire them so that Sweet can use them right that's the idea but we're not trying to find people who actually care about ebay and use it every day and use it as part of their business we want people who like maybe wanted that at some point but have given up and don't use ebay regularly and they're willing to sell their account for like between 100 and 400 dollars um so there was a kind of mess up before where chris made a video to get these leads but he didn't talk about that 100 to 400 dollar part and then also, he used a lot of exaggerated phrasing like, oh, live, your, live the American dream, buy, sell your business, right? So obviously, all three of these leads were like, they were looking for between two and $10,000, which is a lot more than 100 to 400. Dang. <laughs> but yeah. anyway, I'm, I'm sidetracked. So I'm gonna head out now. Thanks for joining, Phil. Hey, see you guys. Yeah, this no, is so, good to meet everybody. Nice, so this nice call meets every week at the same time. This week it had a specific theme, like we were trying to set up at accounts and learn about trading, right? Um, that's the first time this has happened. Normally we just meet, we talk about what we've done. I'll like babble about stuff to make people feel good and motivate them and stuff. And then I ask what's happening next week and then next week we see if that happened and that's basically the premise of the whole group that's cool all right yeah uh, guys ever want to talk about really really exotic thing in the future but once you get your heads around it yeah once we get some more uh once i'm more comfortable with all of these phrases <laughs> yeah. japanese candlestick yeah. trading yeah <laughs> just, just wait until hey. i uh direct you to the uh, mark douglas video that you gotta watch for seven hours <laughs> seven hours yeah never was looking at it the other day on the live stream oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. oh man yeah He's a psychology coach for professional traders. Great. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Ciao. All right.